Dope Black. Dope Black. Let's see. Hmm. What do we have here? New ships, close test 0.11.4. Researchable British battleships, German supercruiser Clausewitz and British battleship Collingwood have been added to the game for testing. The following ships will be added to the game for the upcoming test session. Okay, interesting. Queen Mary. The last British battlecruiser to enter service before the outbreak of World War I, a fast ship with a powerful main battery but relatively weak armor. Thank you, Black Death, for the 30 months. Interesting. Wonder if it's gonna have like full on. I doubt it doesn't look like it'll have Icebreaker, also relatively weak armor. Hmm. British battleship Tiger. What an interesting layout it does. Like, these are very far apart, the turrets. Huh. A battle cruiser that stood out from its predecessor predecessors because of its more rational main battery layout, with turrets on the bow and stern and a more formidable secondary battery. It's, it's casemates, though. Hmm. We'll see. A faster lower tier ship could be pretty cool though. The Tiger looks like a Congo. Gee, I wonder who built the Congo. Surely not the British. British Battleship Rook. Tier 7. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Interesting. That's a lot of superstructure, though. Holy. Like, that, not only is it a fair bit of freeboard here, but man, there's a lot to hit on this ship. That is... Ooh, that is a lot of things to shoot at. Gig very long ship as well. Very long ship. And you can almost make out the central belt right there. I wonder how, much, how big of a citadel this thing is going to have. This thing might be quite squishy, just based on the look of it. 32mm Pinata? I doubt it's going to be 32, it's tier 7. It's probably going to be 26. Project for a battlecruiser proposed after World War One. Project J3. A large ship with a very high speed for its size and, and is also distinguished by more powerful armament and protection compared to its predecessors. British battleship Duncan. Whoa. Whoa, what the hell? Wait, that's a turret? What the? What the fuck? Hello? I thought the Kearsarge was one of the ugliest ships in the game, but Duncan, man. Duncan really putting up a fight. Like, you ain't seen nothing yet. Like, what? This is such a weird design. It can cap two zones at the same time. <laughs> you can cover the left and the right flank at the same time. Holy. This is an actual proposed ship, by the way. Jesus. This remind me this reminds me of French pre-dreadnoughts. Like, what were you thinking? Project for a battle cruiser proposed after World War One, Project G3. The defining feature of this design was its layout of 490mm main battery guns. Good lord. Are they getting worse? A battle cruiser, by the way. What in god? It looks so awful. It looks like something you make in that game where you build your own ships. Uh, it's like, 
like 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 you're peeking through your eyes because like through your fingers because you don't really want to like if you like block off like this this part looks like a normal ship but then this like what what in god's like it's so long as well holy Saint Vincent, a project for a large battle cruiser, cruiser proposed in 1920, Project I-3. The ship's main armor consisted of 457mm guns in turrets located on the bow and amidships. The stats of battle cruisers indefatigable tier 3, renowned tier 6, and hawk tier 8 are still being adjusted. Technical details about the ships will be shared at a later date. 457 again though imagine having 30 millimeter plating and this is a battle cruiser weren't this supposed to be a bit lighter why does it run around with like ohio guns kremlin guns twenty seven and thirty millimeter plating becomes more irrelevant by the day Currently, we have two possible gameplay concepts for British battle cruisers. Medium close range brawlers with short firing range, torpedoes with high damage but small launch sectors, that sounds not that nice. Secondary guns with high chance to set fires, as well as quick acceleration maneuverability characteristics. At the same time, they would have average accuracy and HE penetration values. The deck armor is, this, that is the same as that of British heavy cruisers. Available consumables would include engine boost, defensive AA fire, and repair party. That's one option, or long range ships with high accuracy and powerful HN AP shells. Thunders, equipped with engine boost, defensive AA fire, and a standard repair party, literally thundered. They would, however, not have improved maneuverability and powerful armor. Wait, powerful armor? They would, however, not have improved maneuverability and powerful armor. So, the deck armor is the same as that of British heavy cruisers. Wait, what is British heavy cruiser armor? Same as that, isn't... I thought it had 30, but it might have had 40, actually. Was it 40? Yeah, it was 40. So what does it mean when it says British heavy cruiser? That's really... Do, do they just mean Goliath armor? Why don't they just say 40? Or do they copy them tier for tier, in case the tier 9 would have 30 like the Drake and... 40mm the... deck armor is strong though. What about Gibraltar? What is Gibraltar's armor? Hmm. Wait, do I have a Gibraltar? I don't think I have a Gibraltar. No. Not on this. Oh, no, I don't have, but I mean, we can check it out. But still, I doubt they would quote Gibraltar. They would quote Goliath for sure. We want to test both concepts to determine which one suits the branch best. In order to test both concepts on the same ship, we created a clone of St. Vincent, St. Lawrence. Okay. British battleship Collingwood. Hello, Nelson. Nelson with a different camo, okay. Massachusetts moment, South, South Dakota moment. Yeah, this is like Nelson. Similar to the Nelson class battleships, all six of Collingwood's, Collingwood 490mm guns are in three turrets on the bow of the ship. Collingwood operates as a medium range battleships. Thank you, VG. CV Killer, 65 months, good lord. With a small number of powerful guns, it has access to H and AP shells with good armor penetration and damage values, as well as a high rate of fire. Interesting. No mention of a super hill. So is it the Benson without, or sorry, a Nelson without super hill, but with faster main gun reload? Hmm. Is that, is that why they suddenly have, didn't they just add didn't they just add... Uh... Thank you, Dutchman. 
I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Lighthouse Auction Nelson. See, I don't think that's a coincidence. Hide out on the suddenly this being a coincidence. 490mm tier 7. I, I don't see the big deal. Like it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything, chat. 406 divided by 14.3 is 28, which means you can't overmatch 30 millimeters, but you can overmatch 27 millimeters. 419 divided by 14.3 is the same. You don't cross any important thresholds. It's, it's not an important value in World of Warships. It only matters if you hit 430, because then you cross past 30 millimeter overmatch. So the difference between 406 and 419, 420, 425, whatever, it's completely irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. That's just the way game mechanics work. Nagata's 410, yeah. <clears throat> An important part of the gravitas radiated by United Kingdom's Royal Navy comes from its long standing traditions. Among them are the consistency and inheritance of ship names from generation to generation and the assignment of certain names or types of names to specific ship classes. A striking example of this are so called admirals. At the end of the 19th century, a large, cl large class of capital ships named after naval commanders of the Age of Sail were laid down across Britain's shipyards. These ships went down in history as the first admiral class, with the lead of the six ironclad battleships Collingwood being named after Horatio Nelson's closest associate, Admiral Cuthbert Collingwood. Another series of six ironclads were later named the Duncan classes in class in honor of Admiral Adam Duncan. Interesting. So they're just, they're just explaining why they continued the naming. Therefore, our models, which are based on the blueprints of battleship G3 and I3, bear the names Duncan and St. Vincent. The battle cruiser created according to the revised design of the battleships Nelson and Rodney was named Collingwood. Finally, the J3 and K3 battle cruiser designs were named Rook and Hawk in honor of the two other British naval commanders, Admirals George Rook and Edward Hawk. Fair enough. Hmm. Did you feel if ever feel like there's not enough ships that are Major Nelson? Here's the solution. Oh yeah. German supercruiser Clausewitz. Whew. Looks like a fat Hindenburg. It looks like a like a, like a Hindenburg that went on a, an American McDonald's tour, put on a few pounds, came back. Super ship, huh? Super ship. Twelve a heavy cruiser with twelve two hundred and ten millimeter guns. Powerful AA. <laughs> Doubt. <laughs> sure. Powerful AA. Sure. Sure. And torpedo launchers designed for a long range rating. Torpedo launchers designed for long range raiding. Does this mean it gets Schlieffentorps? Because those are long range. That's the only thing. Why would they say torpedo launchers designed for long range raiding? That would imply Schlieffen torpedoes. The ship's gameplay is an evolution. 6km torpedoes. What? Okay, what? A comma missing? That would make sense. A heavy cruiser with 12 210 millimeter guns, comma, powerful AA, comma, and torpedo launchers, comma, designed for, yeah, this missing one here. That would make sense. The ship's gameplay is an evolution of the tier 10 cruiser Hindenburg, having higher HP, better armor, greater firepower, and more torpedoes. However, to compensate for this notable improvement towards predecessors in the tech tree, close of its will not have any unique super ship mechanics. To compensate for this notable improvement over its predecessors in the tech tree, Clausewitz will not have any unique super ship mechanics. So why does Conda have it? Why, why does Hanover? Fuck, even Hanover has. Why does Satsuma have it? What? Why does uh, Yamagere have it? Yamagere is literally now like a Shima now, except with better turret reverse, 
and more health. It has the same conceal. I mean, I, I like that they're removing... I, I don't mind that they're getting rid of these dumb fucking super ship gimmicks. But, um... Interesting timing on it. Especially since on a German ship they could have easily done something interesting. Like the German cruiser gimmick has always been since the launch of the game Hydro. Something like a 7km Hydro or something. Like, I don't know. Something special. They could have done something special, but um, whatever, whatever. I wonder what kind of armor it has. It looks like a Hinden with more DPM, yeah. But also a Hinden that eats more shit. It kind of reminds me of Annapolis because it's so big. Hinden was already kind of battle battle cruiser Hinden, but this thing is even more so. Hmm. Dude, okay. The German War of Liberation was 141813. The Befrei Befreiungskrieg, War of Freedom, um, was a massive step towards the creation of a unified German state. Okay, this is the naming once again. Was the professional staff officer Karl von Clausewitz best known for his essay on war, which revolutionized the foundations of military science and is still a reference book in military academies around the world? Where World Warships felt that the new heavy cruisers of the German playable nation might be worthy of his name. Okay. Annapolis is not an upgrade to DM. Yeah, that's why I didn't mention Annapolis. I mean, if you get the kite away, with the enemy chasing, Annapolis DPM is pretty damn filthy. And if you get any sort of crossfire situations, Annapolis is filthy. But in the average nose-in situation, um, there's really no point to the ship over DM. But Annapolis, if you get to use all your guns, is filthy as fuck. The damage output is insane. Honestly, Annapolis feels like it doesn't, it's much squishier than the DM because of the fires and the superstructure, but the damage output makes up for it. I'm joking, Annapolis is fucking broken. Yeah, but I mean, if you if you have to, if you fight something like, um, fight, if you're forced to go nose in in Annapolis, suddenly it doesn't feel special at all. Like if you try to play it like a DM, it doesn't really work, but if you play it more like a buffalo, then it's suddenly fucking wacko. It's, it's like a fat, honestly, most of these super ships are just a fat version of the previous ship. With Most of them get benefits from it, but Annapolis doesn't really get the armor benefit that they have. Wait, they buffed the reload to DM reload. Oh, they did? Oh, interesting. Well, then it doesn't have much downsides anymore at all, does it? It's 5.5? .5. Okay, well, never mind. It doesn't have any fucking downsides then. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? It was it was already better. I mean, it was, it was different, but it was already better. Now it's like, what the fuck? Okay, whatever. Uh, I forgot they've done that. I remember it had it had a slight reload down tra down trade thing, thanks to having the extra turret and the gimmick, but I guess that wasn't enough. Okay, Mary. 50k health at tier 4. That's a fair bit of health, actually. Or 48.8. Like, that's a fair bit of health, isn't it? Firing range, 14.5. I mean, for tier 4, it doesn't seem that bad. 30 second reload. Oh, Jesus. Lower tier moment. 1.5 sigma. Holy. Poor bastards, but the HE is nothing. 5k alpha, it's similar to pen, 39% fire chance. Yeah, this thing is brutal. This thing is fucking brutal. It's very tanky and the HE is nothing, but it can't hit shit. Repeater tubes 2x1. Where are these? Are these underwaters? Did they finally add underwaters? 
Or are they melted or do they finally add the underwaters? Did they finally add bow tarps? I can't see any mounted torpedo launcher. They said the underwater fixed tube. They finally added them, huh? Then they're probably somewhere here. Okay, if they're straight nose in, that's pretty crazy. Because those can be very powerful, very useful. Will Nelson get her underwater torpedoes? Ha! If Nelson was going to get her underwater torpedoes, they would have announced that before they put her up for auction. Ten k damage. Hmm. 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 Yeah, it's obviously a meme as always. Twenty-seven point five knots for tier four. Jesus. It's almost as fast as the Russian one, isn't it? Doesn't the Russian one do like 28? Turning to 740, handles really well, 12.8, quite very stealthy as well. Interesting. Interesting. Um, Bennett, can we help you? Tiger 5. Doesn't get much of a health increase. 1.5 Sigma still at tier 5. Oof. HE is still quite scary, but not as scary anymore. 4x1. 4 single launchers? Interesting. Um. I'm wondering about this, like, I mean, it's gonna be maximum dispersion 185. Is that BC dispersion? Do they get BC dispersion? I can kind of, it must be BC dispersion, right? That's the only thing that makes sense. This, this can't be battleship dispersion, it has to be BC. At 16.3k range, 185 sounds like battlecruiser dispersion to me. So 1.5 Sigma with that dispersion isn't that bad. I think Florida has like 1.5 Sigma as well. But Florida has Battlecruiser dispersion. Hmm. Maximum speed 29. Man, it's fast. Surface to 13. Engine boost. Interesting. Rook tier 7. 60k almost. 16 millimeter plating instead of 26 holy 16 millimeter damn Sharnhorst will overmatch this thing Sharnhorst will overmatch the rook interesting three x 381s though okay 17.5 firing range fire chance goes down that is curious. Caliber goes up, Alpha goes up, Fire Chance goes down. Okay, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but sure. 180. Reload 30. Maximum dispersion 195. Ooh, the Sigma. 195 at 17.5. Okay, wait. What are we dealing with here now? Let me check. Let me check like. 17.5 range. This is roughly the same. This is 226. This is battleship dispersion, actually. It's not even BC, it's battleship dispersion. This isn't BC. That's pretty dreadful. There's no there's no way that's. I mean, what other battleships do I have? These guys have so much range. 
like this is this guy Florida has BC dispersion, so you can see he's he's got twenty one point six camera range, which is at this point like four kilometers more, and it's only two two six or two two nine, sorry. Let's see Strasbourg. Who do we have that has about seventeen camera range from the battleship? Hmm. This one is 17.5. 181. Yeah. And this thing has battleship dispersion. So this is a BB dispersion. Not battleship. Or sorry, not battle cruiser. It's battleship dispersion. Sheesh. 1.5 Sigma with battleship dispersion and Yeah, no, that's junk. <laughs> that's that's junk. That's absolute junk. Are they trying to drive closer range combat with this? I would assume I would assume that's what they're trying to do. Secondary is mm, not too special. AA, what do we have? Pretty good short range, but oh no, but all of this is like super short range. And planes don't spend any time here. The the AA that matters is kind of irrelevant, unfortunately. 31.9 maximum speed, huge turning circle for tier 7, huge turning circle for tier 7. Surface detect is very good though. Hmm. Oh, I guess defensive AA. Hmm. I mean, playing this thing close range though with this turning circle, that size, this armor. Yeah, I don't know about that one. We'll see. Seems questionable. Duncan. 75.2k health. That's pretty me 20 25. So 380s overmatch the Duncan. 419 guns, 18.9k range. HE shells do hit hard. Not as hard as actual Royal Navy shells, but very hard. Good strong fire chance. Less than 24 hours before I land in London, there's been a COVID-19 variant found in Great Britain. <laughs> and you want to get, enjoy, Nick. Huh? Yikes. 1.5 Sigma on tier 9? Torps that's hit really hard. Really, really hard. But only two of them. But I guess if you're in a, like, rushing down an enemy situation, they might be good. Um, they're quite fast. And detectability is quite good. Almost these are almost Shima Torps. These are almost Shima 12 cams. Slightly better conceal actually. I think Shima 12s are 1.8. Um let's see. Maximum HE. 152s and 113s. 7 km range. Very slow shell velocity though. But does if does it have the Royal Navy improved penetration on these? There might be some secondary potential here if it gets because uh, royal navy battleships have quarter pen if it gets the same quarter pen um it might be decent the count is pretty high it will depend on firing angles on the secondaries and if it gets any sort of buff reg re um, regarding accuracy of secondaries aa defense uh oh it's got a lot of bow force wargaming kind of hates bow force a defense short range damage 249 505 yeah now this is once again yikes all the good AA is 3.5 and below which is where honestly planes spend the minimum amount of time and like the problem is if all your AA is short range what you're doing is kind of maybe mitigating follow-up but most of the times when they go over you they're in full immunity zones like the time, most of the time that they spend in this zone, they they have some sort of horseshit immunity going on. So what actually matters is the long range and the flak. To when it comes to preventive strikes to yourself or even helping your teammate, um, and it's kind of junk. It's actually really junk. Hmm. Speed thirty two, turning circle better than actually the. This one is significantly well. Okay, interesting. 
Or you should 16.6, that's not very 15.3k I'm concealed. 15.3, whoops, let's see, 15.3, what do we have? We, we add concealment expert, we add the module, we add the camo. 12km conceal. 12km conceal. That's pretty strong. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. But still, I hate I hate the accuracy on these guns. That's gonna tilt me hard. Damage control, specialized repair, super heal, engine boost defensive. Hmm. Imagine being the most effective AA during World War II, but being shafted by a gaming company that is promoting Russian paper AA as the greatest AA in the world that never existed during wartime. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> Moskva and uh, Petro and Smolensk, they all got the long-range Soviet flag. That is basically the strongest in World War II. It's, it's an interesting choice for sure. Hmm. Brains. Is that a paid promo by Amaranth? Because you know, like at least 50 people probably click that stream now. Uh, let's see. British Battleship St. Vincent. Tier 10. 79.4. 25 as well. 457s. Refining range 19.5. HE 7.1. That's almost thunder, HE. That's almost thunder. Conquer, I think, is 16 point, let's see. Conquer, I think, is 16, 6.3, and I think uh, thunder is 7.3. No, it's 7.2, sorry. What was thunder? 8 point, wasn't thunder 8.2, maybe? 7.2k maximum damage, 50% fire chance. 7.1, 63. Jesus, so this fuck me. This is like a conqueror light. A fire chance is filthy as hell though. Still terrible sigma. So this is gonna be another HE flinging ship, huh? Same torps. Secondaries with a lot of secondaries actually. Fair bit of secondaries. 20, 16, 36 secondaries. That's a fair bit of them. This might be quite frustrating to fight. It's gonna be like an HEB, extreme HEBB. AA once again, all of all, everything is mid-range and the long range is a meme. Yeah, you gotta take into account 75% accuracy on this, which greatly reduces the effectiveness. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Speed 32.5, turning circle pretty rough, rudder shift pretty rough. Surface detect 16.3, that is worse. Air detect. Hmm. Interesting. So far, it looks like an inaccurate, faster, stealthier. Well, not much stealthier, actually. Conquer. Hmm. With potential secondaries, but no armor to back it up. Depends what kind of. If they give it an icebreaker or some horseshit. We'll see. Collingwood. This is a new Nelson, huh? Holy. Wait, what? Yo, this kind of uh, HE performance at tier 7 is wacko. 25 second reload, 2.0 sigma. This is... Jesus. Yeah, that's kind of not there. Interesting. AA is a meme, of course. Complete meme speed, 25, not that good. Surface detect, pretty good. Yeesh. Oh, here we go. Klausowitz, 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 Klausowitz. What do we have here? Hit point 58. Plating 27. Okay. Looks like Hindenburg armor then. Tier 10 does not have a super heal now. Oh, sorry. No, it does not. You're right. Interesting. Fires, 30 seconds. That's an advantage. Main battery, 4x3, 210. Firing range, 18.5. That's pretty good. 
14% fire chance. Nine second reload. What's it's an error? It has to be an error. You get 2.9 like York. 2.9, okay. Yeah. Because that made no sense, 2.4. That sounded completely off. Actually, let's do it this one. Yeah, two point, it can have been. 2.9, 14% fire chance isn't very high though. Stock reload is 9.8. This thing has 9. So then it's... That's 10% and that's another... Shit, that's a pretty big buff in terms of damage output. It's going to be at least 20% higher. Is it confirmed at 2.9? 2.9 then. So it has built-in uh, built improved range. 2.9 from 2.5 to 2.9. That's already a significant buff. That's like what, 15% DPM? Hundred and eighty three K DPM. What is hundred and eighty three K DPM? Did you calculate two point four? Because it's supposed to be two point nine. Oh it's Hinden has hundred and eighty three. This thing has two hundred and eight. So fifteen percent roughly, yeah. Maybe not that much, but close. Okay, so it's it does do it does does do more damage than Hinden then. Fire chance fourteen compared to Hinden's base thirteen, so slight increase, very slight. It does have better range though by default. Real time. Maximum dispersion sigma, this looks the same. Torpedo tubes, 4x5, this looks the same. Hindenburg torps. Yeah, 6 cam range. Interesting. Secondary is, eh. It was supposed to have strong AA. Is it going to be limited? Oh, it gets 6 cam instead of 5.2. That's already a big advantage. Short range, 399. Unfortunate. Short, mid range, 312. Once again, these are not the best ones. The long range is the weakest. 6 flak. Yeah, honestly, this is not that impressive. Wait, 4x5? Doesn't Hinden have 4x4? Wait, no. What does Hinden have? Hinden has 4x4. Yeah, this thing gets 4x5, so it has 20 torps. It's the same torps, but it gets, it gets 2 more per side. Um, 6 flak, 6 game range, 140. Yeah, it's this Petro has built in 8th flag. I don't know if you can see. And Petro has better long range, and Petro has 6.6 .6 game range as well. So, like, Petro still has 25% more flag with 10% more range and just better long range output. Um, significantly better long range output. So, obviously, this super german a strong aa is still isn't as good as um what the soviets have but it's an improvement to hinden it's a great improvement hinden has 5.2 it's got dog shit german aa that has no range at all maximum speed 32.5 it will be about the apd pen mm, depends when it comes down to it, sure, but I mean, um, start, start of the game and most of significant damage of the output of Hindenburg is HE spam at range. Turning circle, 820, that's pretty good considering how big it is. Rudder shift, also pretty good considering the size. Surface detect 16.3. 16.3, we'll add in a camo, we'll add in a module, we'll add in the concealment expert. 
12.8 if you go conceal. That's not very good. But with that armor, that's like Nevsky. Except you don't have a radar. Mm. It's probably going to be two options once again. Either you go Lighthouse or you go Conceal. Those, those will both probably be viable options. Lighthouse might be more comfortable thanks to the built-in range. Because you can just go full damage output. Damage control, Hydro Fighter Spotting Repair. Yeah, 58k health. Was it him then? He didn't have exactly... Where is he? 51.9. It's 15% increase. Not quite, but more than 10. 10, 11, 12. Hmm. It's a stronger Hindenburg by the looks of it. It's a stronger Hindenburg, really. The ability after firing main guns in smoke 10.6. Interesting. Yeah, 10.2 for him. Hmm. Conde would laugh about it. Yeah, that really. The fact that it doesn't really get a special gimmick on top. We'll have to see what kind of armor it gets and what kind of citadel. And um, the, the issue right now is that it looks very, very big. So, uh, what will it, it will come down to is how well protected is the citadel, how good is the armor actually. Also, another factor will of course be the firing angles. This is a lot of junk in the way. Are the firing angles going to be good? Yay or nay? It remains to be seen. Why can't I see the torpedo tubes though, champ? Why can I not see the torpedo tubes? Oh, there they are, there they are. Okay, they're both here. So they're pretty central. They're pretty central. I'm blind, that's all. They're underneath the lifeboats. Fair enough. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Could be interesting. Could be interesting. It has 232k DPM. Someone just, Citizen just said 208. Which sounded pretty low considering the reload and the alpha bonus, but. Two hundred and eight was with the two forty, yeah that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I mean he's American, we can't expect good math from him. <laughs> in <the> education. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, but yeah, 232 sounds more plausible. That sounds too pl more plausible because it got it got 10% from reload alone. And then if it gets an alpha increase, which is more than 10%, can't end up being so low. So from 100 and what was it? 183 to 232. That's a big damage bomb. 25% or some shit. That's a big goddamn bump in damage. Yeah, 26.5%. That's a big damage increase. That is a big damage increase. No wonder it didn't feel like it needs a gimmick right now. That's a lot of damage to pump out. Interesting. Interesting. Lighthouse? Yeah, I wonder what kind of... I mean, you gotta... Lighthouse is on... on uh, what was it called? Mecklenburg? What's it called? Mecklenburg. Uh, lighthouse on that thing is probably gonna be really filthy, because you gotta remember that a lighthouse scales um, is percentage-based. So the higher your base value is, the more bumping it gives you. So, because it's percentage base increases, so if the higher high value is high to begin with, and then you add percentage bonuses on top of it, it becomes... Mecklenburg was the BB. What the hell was it called? Clausewitz. That's the one. Clausewitz, yeah. Sorry for the question. What is Lighthouse? My calculator was in integer mode. It rounded the RPM from 6 to 67 down to 6. Ah, yeah, that would explain why you suddenly lost so much DPM. 
What is Lighthouse? Lighthouse is when you intentionally nerf your concealment. Normally, instead, normally you build concealment on cruisers, but Lighthouse is when instead of building concealment, you intentionally, you intentionally, like instead of building concealment, you instead nerf it. So you spec things like heavy HE, which gives you 10% more HE DPM, uh, but it also nerfs your concealment. And then you spec top grade gunner, which gives you 8% reload, increases the reload of the main battery if there's a visible enemy within your ship's standard detectability range. And standard detectability range is literally your spotting range. So the idea with the lighthouse build is that you make your spotting rate, your detectability as poor as possible, so that this is always active. In that way, you, you get 8% reload from here, you get 10% DPM from this skill, uh, and obviously since these are two percentage-based buffs, when you have something like 232, then you add 10%, you gain another 23k DPM, and then you add 8%, then it jumps again, and then you add your reload module, and it jumps again, then you add your AR, and it jumps again, and you stack all these buffs on top of each other, uh, and you build up, you basically sacrifice all concealment for a damage output. That's a lighthouse build. Oh, and of course, plus Gunther Lutjens, which is why Hindenburg Lighthouse is so popular. He's got this thing, which is another 7.5%. So you end up having like 7.5, potentially 10, 15% from here, 10% from here, 8% from here. And then from the equipment, the reload module is another 12% from here. And you, you get all these modifiers uh, and your damage output becomes really obscene. And you got to remember if, if the close of it already has by default 26 percent higher the benefits it gains from these builds is also going to be 26 percent higher so obviously a lighthouse close of it can be quite a terrifying quite a terrifying tool you also have the advantage of because you don't care about concealment you get to slot this module steering gears mod which helps with one of the major issues of the hindenburg clumsiness and probably with the close of it as well so yeah uh, that is that is a lighthouse build. It's called it. I mean a lighthouse is something you can see from far away because like it's got that shining beacon uh, That's why it's called a lighthouse build because you're spotted across the map, but in return you do a shit ton of damage Which lines are best for lighthouse builds? Uh, Henry is probably the single best ship for lighthouse because of Henry IV's uh, unique legendary module I, I talked about stacking these modules, these benefits, these buffs on top of each other. Well, Henry is special in the sense that Henry can slot this thing. Improved main battery loading. Let's see, I can hide the chat back so you guys can see it. This goes in the slot for the concealment. This is the unique upgrade for the Henry. And this thing gives you 8% range and 12 minus 12% 12 reload. So you can stack this as well as this. So you get two 12% modifiers, you get 8% range as well. And then, of course, you go with your standard. I mean, this is what, I, what I have on my Henry right now is a lighthouse build. So we got, we got this, and we got this, and we just got speed boost. And like, this is a lighthouse build, because Henry works really well for it. It would be better if I had the legendary mod, because 12% extra DPM would be really great, but I don't have it, so we make do. But still, that is a lighthouse build. Okay, we kind of got distracted. Anyway, let's continue. Then let's continue. That's why you. Ha that's why my detect range on my Henry is 19, and that's why I don't have a camo. It's not an accident. It's intentional. I don't want the camo because I want my gun range to be as close to my detectability as possible. Anyway, uh, let's see. Where were we? We were doubling, 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 doubling. Here we go. Next one. Next doubling. We got kind of, contrary to popular belief, lighthouse is not for light ships. No, no. I mean, you can actually, you can play lighthouse with high DPM ships, um, like Bayard and Mines, like ships that already have high DPM, but they are significantly more difficult to play, especially lower tier ones are significantly more difficult because uh, with, with ships like Henry and Hinden, they can, they can take a hit and they can heal from the hit. With lower tier shifts, you can't do that. Colbert, Lighthouse Colbert is also popular. I think uh, is John the Ruthless plays Lighthouse Salem, and he's brutally good at playing Lighthouse Salem. 
Um, there's plenty of ships. Like basically take a ship that has either a lot of maneuverability or a lot of tankiness and a fair bit of damage and then you add lighthouse on top. Close of its on lighthouse is 353,000 dpm. So, sounds about right. Is that with AR counted in? Is F Sherman worth doing lighthouse? You can't do lighthouse on on destroyers. It's a cruiser build because it it's built around top grade gunner and heavy HE. Neither skill exists on destroyers. That's like max AR. Oh, the three hundred fifty three again. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Let's go. Uh, new map: French cruisers in early access. More ships. Oh, that's the, the oh no, the other ugly ones. Arms race in the public test. Changes to submarines and other news. Close test zero point eleven point four. Let's take a look at some upcoming new features. Sure. A new map, the theme of which, Faroe Islands, was voted by players back in autumn 2021. It's now is in final stages of development. We plan to test it during the public test for update 0 0.11.5 and fully release it when the update goes like New map. Holy. Holy. What do you mean by lighthouse build? I just answered that question. I literally just, <laughs> just had a long basically essay explanation of what light has it new map though holy wait holy wait uh wait wait wait, wait. when When was the last time? I think I made a tweet about this. When did I make it? Oh, here it is. Here it is. January 2020. Northern Waters announced for 0 0.9.1. January 2020. We're now in April 2022. So it's been what, 24, 25 months, 25 months since we have gotten a new map. Holy, holy, good, long have we waited. I wonder if it's going to be in early access, you have to pay like the special map tokens to get to play it and you have to pay for those map tokens. Wouldn't surprise me. They're ex finding a way to monetize that as well. Sorry, not 25. Sorry. Um, shit, it's been like 27 months. 26 months. 26 months even. 25, 26, 27 months. Yeah. I don't know why I for some reason counted as at 22 and then I added 3 so it became 25. EU math will now... <laughs> Still, over two years. Over two years. Hmm. I like the I like the look. I like the look. We'll see how it plays. The coastline looks kinda of potato though. Is it just me? Or like the coastline looks kinda the the it kinda looks like the island, you know, was almost photoshopped on top of the water. It, it doesn't it? Can't wait to get stuck there, right? Must be sub compatible. Hmm, plausible. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Uh, new map is cool. Long have we waited. Update 0 0.11 before we welcome a new branch of French cruisers in early access. Players will be able to complete special combat missions. Yay! To receive a new temporary resource, French tokens. Yay! The final reward for completing the mission will be the tier 8. Thank you. 
We're adding permanent camouflages, liberation for Cherbird, Breast, Marseille, and Enlightenment for Toulon. Man, I love not having a new take tree line being added to the take tree, but instead being hidden behind some fucking bullshit token I gotta grind or pay for. That's my favorite. Jesus. Okay, I kind of like the I like the turrets, and I like the nose. But honestly, Marseille is just so ugly. It's like putting makeup on a pig. Like, I get what you're trying to do, but it's not saving it. Sheesh. Art department really tried. I feel, but like once again. These ships just look wonky. They don't look as bad. I mean, it, it really puts in perspective how, how ugly the new Brits are when these don't look as bad. The port of Marseille was updated. Yay! It looks nice. Arms racing random and co-op battles on the public test. After having appeared several times on the live server as either as a format for ranked battles or a separate battle type, most recently 0.10.9, Arms Race is by now a familiar game mode for many players. The statistics and player feedback gathered throughout each of these past iterations have served to help us continually refine this game mode. As a result, Arms Race will be resurfacing for the public test of update 0.11.4 as one of the possible game modes in both random and co-op battles. Interesting. That's actually... That can be pretty interesting. We will be it will be available in battles where the highest tier ships are nine, ten, and super ships. Ah, of course they will. On the following eight maps: Northern Waters, Sleeping Giant, Loop, Warriors Path, Mountain Range, Land of Fire, Islands of Ice, and Hotspot. But that's basically all of the high tier maps. Well. The matchmaker settings for arms race will be similar to the existing ones for random and co op battles, respectively. With the addition of the arms race mode, the epicenter mode will be disabled in both random and co op battles. Wasn't there recently like a Q de developer QA where they said epicenter was fine? Shit, I remember. I'm pretty sure there was quite recently. A, like, the, I swear, everything they said in their QA has aged like milk. It's aged like the worst milk, like unpasteurized milk. That's how it's aged. It was in the Discord Discord Q and A. But man, disabling Epicenter is good. Uh, Epicenter as a game mode is one of those few situations where I'm not even too like I'm not even too mad at wargaming for it because. The, the game mode has the potential to be really good. There's one circle, three circles. You want to push in and control it. If this player base had IQ, it would play kind of like dirigible derby with a lot of close range fighting, brawling, people fighting over the zones and so forth. But because the World of Warships player base is fucking stupid as a sack of bricks, um, the average epicenter game usually ends up in a five minute steamroll where one team sails around the flanks and ignores the objective and the other team has like one radar cruiser, cruiser pushes into the middle, kills all your DDs and wins the game. So, so yeah. Yeah, it's um, epicenter's major issue is the player base, not the game mode itself but honestly i don't see how you can fix that because obviously they're not interested in teaching the player base so and the people who need to be taught aren't interested in learning either so disabling it is probably the best choice you'd think a game mode where there's one objective and it's in the middle of the map would be simple enough for the player base to comprehend but no no it's not. It's not. We'll decide on the future of the arms race on the live server based on your feedback and statistics after the public test adopted 0 0.11.4. Clan Battle Season 17 Kaiman. The new Clan Battle Season will be takes yada yada yada. On tier 10 ships and super ships. <laughs> Wait, what? Super ships? 
<laughs> oh, I thought, really? What? One team cannot field more than one battleship and two super ships. Aircraft carriers, as well as the ships Petra and Clabera Man. Man, uh, fuck, I would have loved to see super CVs in this game mode. It would have been so hilarious to watch, like, the CV defenders, uh, like, fucking try to defend the fact that seven super unicorn players combined can't defend against one super carrier. But then again, Nakimov is also banned, and Nakimov is kind of like a super carrier already, so... Petro and Claber are also banned from participation, of course. Imagine rebalancing Petro or Claber when you could just ban them. The list of maps that will be used has not yet been determined. Super ships, though. Shit. What are people gonna run? I don't know if Yamagiri is that good, because you can just run Ragnar, like Ragnar Small and still just smashes it. I don't think anyone is... It's gonna be Conde, if anything. Conde is fucking cracked. Conde is like really cracked. I haven't played actually the Edgar, so I don't know how good it is. If Patri comes out, Patri of course, but I, I won't be out by then. I don't know if people would, would sacrifice a slot for the Annapolis. Considering the positions where you play it, you can probably just slap like a DM or a Stalin or something. Well, not quite a Stalin in the same positions, but like if you want radar coverage, I don't think you'd use it. If anything, I would expect maybe Conde and we'll see. Hanover might be seen because it's really small scale. And like Hanover, for example, Hanover can do things like Schlieffengan, except, well, it depends on the map, of course, but. Hanover is kind of fucking nutty with the special instructions, especially. It's so hard to kill. Like, if you have hands. Even with focus fire, it takes so long to kill it. There's also Satsuma, I guess. Depends on, like, how and where you play it. Satsuma on a kiting, at kiting flank is probably going to be ass to try to push into. With the special accuracy gimmick. Like trying to push into a kiting Satsuma who has like a DD or something to scout for him. Yeah. Because it has much better armor than Yamato to begin with. And it armor matches everything. Special gimmick with someone if someone like even a nose in Petro against Satsuma isn't isn't that good. Well Petro is banned, but like you can target the weak part because of the hundred percent accuracy. Why bring Shik Isatsuma and you can bring Shikishima? Mm. I don't know, we'll see. I think Hanover is, or sorry, Konda is going to be very popular though. I don't see why it wouldn't be. It's kind of, Konda is fucking cracked. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. See, We'll see what how it develops. Could be interesting. Okay, with the release of Zero Point, the following changes summers the ability to launch conventional torpedoes at maximum depth has been disabled. Okay. Conventional torpedoes can no longer be lane, but vertical making them extremely ineffective on launch deep below the surface. Okay. We disabled the increased depletion rate of a submarine's dive capacity when detected by the enemy. What? So what's the downside of dolphining now? There isn't one. There's no downside to dolphining. Interesting. As the increased dive capacity depletion rate when spotted was already negligible and had little effect on gameplay, we decided to remove the feature altogether. Now when a sonar ping is emitted by an undetected submarine, a visual effect will be displayed within several kilometers vicinity of the submarine itself, but the sonar ping itself will no longer be visible as it moves across the map. That's it? The fact that you need a big fucking arrow 
to point out the effect is extremely worrying to me. Because, like, in the middle of combat with people shooting planes, actions, fucking explosions and stuff, do, do, I get the, do I get this arrow in game and this box in game to let me know where the sub is as well? Like, you needed a fucking arrow and a square. And I think they even increased the... Look, they, they made it lighter. This is not... This is lighter than this texture, I think. Did they even lighten it up? Just so we could fucking see that minimal line of white over there. Are you shitting me? It is, it's like a zoomed in version. Ho Yo, how is that a... What? The former representation of the sonar pigs moving across the map gave away the general direction of the enemy submarine well enough. No, it didn't. But due to the 8K and detectability range of the pings themselves, it could sometimes be difficult to understand how far the submarines was since they could be emitting sonar pings from further ranges than 8KM. Oh shit, so that's what was happening. It was You saw where the ping started and then you dropped the death charge there, but he could be sitting one kilometer behind it. Wow. So no, no wonder the blind fire was so fucking horrendously inaccurate. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know. I thought it started from the ship itself. But that's that, that was, it was even worse than I thought. Why is that every time we talk about submarines, the, the sentence, it was even worse, pops up? The new effect will show the approximate location of the sub itself, regardless of its distance. However, the sound effect produced by passing pings, as well as the sound of pings hitting your ship, will remain allowing target surface to be on the lookout for ping emissions visual effect. With the change in the way the center ping is represented, it will therefore be possible for a surface ship to more accurately determine the general position of an enemy submarine and carry out an accurate airstrike. Like, this, their examples are extremely calm water. But, you know, in World of Warships, the water isn't always this calm. Like, there's there's choppy seas. There's literally choppy seas that basically look like this all over. Like this white foam all over. There's choppy seas. What the fuck do you do in a map like that if you're supposed to, like, notice this? So, am I gonna have to start installing a mod? Like, calm water mod or fucking coloring this red or something just so I can make it out in the middle of battle. Like imagine being in fight with other ships with secondary shells splashing all over the place and like all the action that usually happens, well it used to happen before they added submarines. Uh, all the action going on and then you try to find this shit somewhere. What? Shit, what, what happens if there's a ship here? Like, what happens if in this situation there's a ship here? Like, just blocking the path. <laughs> I guess I can't, I don't have any indication that. <laughs> How long does this even stay around? I don't know, like, I don't This seems very little. We added a new highly requested by players adjustable settings for the minimap. Highlight exact position on map. When double clicking on the minimap, the exact point that was clicked will be highlighted to other players on your team, instead of the square surrounding the point. Hey, that's really good. Report position of objects. Double clicking objects on the map, ships, key areas, fort and buff areas, will result in a team-wide report highlighting that object similar to how the hotkeys are used. Oh shit! New advanced technology boys! New advanced technology. We can we can ping the exact position. Forts. Forts. Hmm. Maybe it's nothing. If 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 we get this kind of thing. Will they be, let's see, will they be updated? The ping, the, I'm seeing the mini DD sub, subs here. Let's see, what is this? Oh yeah, see that's nice, being able to ping like that. I really like that. Interesting. Circle setting, other settings. Wait, where did you find that? 
You, the minimap sub. Okay. There's nothing here about submarines appearing on the minimap. Where, where did you read that? Wait, also, as I go back to this, now when a sonar ping is emitted by an undetected submarine, a visual effect will be display within several kilometers vicinity of the submarine itself. Okay, interesting. They said so on stream? Did they really? So if they ping you, I see them on the minimap? Pog! That, that would actually be a very good change. Anyway, uh, this is a good change. New map, like, there, there's some, a lot of, there's some dumb shit here, but there's also some really good changes. The minimap change, um, the new map. These are Pog. Use this black map. Okay. Mm. You will be able to earn and exchange tokens for themed sequential bundles with containing historical commanders, a patch, a flag, and permanent camo for black. Okay. You will need to have 24,000 tokens, which can be purchased with doubloons at a rate of 1 to 1. You can also earn up to 2,500 tokens during the course of the portal campaign. Uh, at the end of the chain, black itself will be available for 19,300 doubloons. Immediately following the end of the portal campaign, Black will be made available in the armory in exchange for coal. The exact cost will be about the same as New Stashim. It's super expensive now. It will be possible to apply the ship's armor coupon, which will incidentally be refreshed in June. Interesting. The Naval Community Tab will offer premium ship 5, premium ship 7 containers in exchange for community tokens. Interesting. New content. Okay, new two new commanders, Frederick Hendrik Chapman. Okay, permanent camo, French cruisers, black. Oh, interesting. Well, so that's the camo, huh? Hmm, it kind of looks Lego ish, especially this thing here. Can you see like this part here? This looks like very Lego ish. I really get like Lego, Lego-esque vibes from this one. Just me? I don't know. Looks very toy-ish. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So I will be... So now, if everyone pings the map at the same time, we will have the ability with our powers combined to finally draw dicks on the minimap. Thank you, Wargaming. I have waited for this moment. I have waited for this moment. It's the core issue that I have been missing from World of Warships. It has finally been added. I will be able to draw dicks. Long have we waited. 